informing age-appropriate AI, examining principles and practices of AI for children. AI systems are becoming increasingly pervasive within children's everyday activities, and they're starting to play a variety of roles in the digital ecosystems of children. Meanwhile, this use of AI comes with new kinds of risks, some of which were of particular concern for children. Yet, understanding the ways that AI systems are being used for children and how we can develop better AI design for children is still a new and emerging area of, inv of investigation. In order to answer these questions, we investigated the intersection of the two areas. We first conducted a policy review, in which we looked at what are the AI design principles that were prompted by the regulatory community. We then conducted a landscape analysis of existing AI systems developed for children to achieve a mapping between the regulatory efforts and current practices. Starting with the policy review, on one hand, there exists a growing body of general regulatory AI frameworks, but not specifically focusing on how that relates to children. On the other hand, there is a complementary body of literature focusing on designing age-appropriate digital technologies specifically for children, but not focusing on the AI aspect. The two branches of work were separated, but related, and sometimes they touched on similar topics, but in different ways. There is therefore this confusing smokesboard of different frameworks and guidelines relating to somewhat overlapping concerns. This can make it difficult for designers and practitioners to effectively establish concrete design suggestions and standards. We compared these two sets of frameworks and policies, and conducted a ground-up thematic analysis of key design principles discussed in them. We grouped the design principles by their specific definitions and identified 10 areas of alignment. To see how these principles relate to existing AI systems for children, we conducted a landscape analysis through a systematic literature review, including 188 papers on AI systems developed for children from the HCI community, constructing a high-level overview of key systems and their characteristics including their target audience, kinds of data processed, as well as application domains and computational methods used. We further cross-compared our policy review and landscape analysis with the aim of identifying whether and how the previously identified design principles were addressed in existing AI systems developed for children. Specifically, we looked at if and how each design principle is considered through application domains of AI for children. In general, we found that papers from each application domain focused on a small number of specific concerns related to a small number of principles that were most relevant in each application domain. Take the medical diagnosis systems developed for children, for example. We can see that only a small number of design principles were addressed very locally on some specific concerns. In fact, the only two principles that were seen as important for this domain are accountability and safety do not harm. Meanwhile, when identifying the how, in terms of how AI systems manage to follow a specific design principle, we found that some work were grounded in or guided by theoretical work and empirical work, such as the use of self-determination theory in some tutoring systems. However, such expertise was localized to a few domains, such as personalized tutoring. The remaining application domains had much less supporting theory available. Our results show that we may require new thinking in the area of AI for children. There are at least two reasons why we think that a unified code for age-appropriate AI design will be beneficial. First, our results show that while designers and researchers did address some of the common principles in their designs, these considerations were localized to a small subset of principles we identified. A broad, age-appropriate AI design code may thus not only serve as a reminder of the other principles, but to highlight risks and issues that may be no less important than the ones that are most immediately relevant. The second advantage of establishing a unified age-appropriate design code for AI is that it may create a space for researchers to assemble expertise on the ways different kinds of AI-related harms affect children differently from adults, and the corresponding body of theory and empirical findings for mitigation. What might our analysis suggest about assembling a code for age-appropriate AI design then? Based on, our, based on our finding, we synthesized the previously identified 10 common design principles into five by grouping related considerations together. For each principle, we highlighted its core considerations and relevant challenges for future designers. 
starting with the first, fairness, equality, inclusion, and access. This principle refers to not only to discovering the need of diverse groups, but also ensuring that all children are treated fairly and equally. Some key challenges we identified include the difficulty in directly involving children in the design process, and it may be particularly hard for some domain-specific applications to consider whether this discrimination exists. The second, transparency and accountability, which refers to the identifying a chain of accountability for system misbehavior and makes systems easy to understand and predict. In terms of gaps and challenges, we encourage future designers to think of new ways for establishing accountability mechanisms and to think, take into consideration of the different capability of individual children on interpreting transparency messages. The third, privacy manipulation and exploitation. To protect children's privacy online refers to respecting their interpersonal and data privacy online, as well as taking precautions to forbid the use of their data to make exploitation of them. On the other hand, sometimes the use of children's data and subsequent manipulation were actually essential for the functioning of the system, and it could be hard to determine what counts as good or detrimental nudging and manipulation. Next, safety and safeguarding. The word harm is centered to safety and safeguarding, that is to ensure systems do not directly or indirectly endanger children through intentional or unintentional design or behavior. Meanwhile, we encourage future designers and researchers to think of new ways to evaluate the safety of systems apart from pure technical means, and come up with more comprehensive definition of what indeed counts as harmful content for children. Finally, sustainability and age appropriateness, which is around children's long-term well-being and development. Gaps we identified include that the theoretical and empirical groundings for this principle were relatively thin, and the current evaluation criteria used for assessing whether an AI system is indeed sustainable or age-appropriate is sometimes vague. The contributions of this paper are threefold. The first, a clarification of the overlaps among the leading regulatory efforts for AI for children. Second, a landscape analysis of existing AI systems developed for children. And finally, a things aside framework to inform a new code for age-appropriate AI, as well as the gaps and challenges that future designers could think about. We hope this work will provide timely input to emerging policies and standards and present an opportunity to ensure a multi-dimensional safeguarding of children in future AI systems.